Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we're looking at the new game Elden Ring, which is making a lot of waves for both critics and consumers alike. This video is for folks who are maybe unfamiliar. This is not a video for fans that are already well versed in what this is. So what is this game? Who is it for? Elden Ring is the latest game from the studio From Software, available on all major consoles. From Software are known for their past games such as Demon's Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. If you're familiar with those games, they're all relatively known for their difficulty. Challenging enemies and fights that really push you, likely requiring many attempts as you figure out how to defeat certain enemies. There's a name for this genre of game now, called Souls-likes. Dying in these games is normal, so it's a process of learning how to best tackle each situation. They're also known for not holding your hand through the game, so you won't see a map full of question marks that lead you to new quests, but rather they want you to explore the world and find quests naturally. So Elden Ring is the newest entry into this lineage, with one notable change. These past games were fairly linear, whereas Elden Ring is what's called an open world game. From the outset, you can see the world in the distance and you can go wherever you'd like. The enemies in Elden Ring don't change level based on your own level, so this means you could wander into areas where enemies are drastically more powerful. So the game becomes a learning exercise of trying to face enemies and deciding if this is an area your character is ready for. The story of Elden Ring is a fantasy setting, though considered a dark and gritty fantasy. You'll see monsters, such as giants and dragons here, while also experiencing more unconventional enemy types. The world was co-created by Hidetaka Miyazaki, who helped craft the other From Software games we discussed, and George R. R. Martin, famous for writing the Game of Thrones books. I won't go into the story so much, as it's one that will unfold slowly as you learn about the world itself and how your character fits in it. Speaking of your character, you get the chance in Elden Ring to create your own character, to a limited degree. You get to adjust your character's stats, which will parallel your game style. If you want to wield a two-handed sword, you'll look for a class to choose that focuses on stats like strength. If you want to be a magic user, maybe look for a class with a high intelligence, for example. You also get to change your character's appearance, but it'll likely be covered by gear most of the time. You also get to edit and adjust these stats throughout the game, so if you decide to change play styles, you absolutely can. While you're out in this world, I mentioned that you're not handheld at all, so you may enjoy this game if you're okay with freedom and mystery. You'll encounter a non-playable character that tells you a rumor about a certain person or a location. You won't get a notification for where to go and you won't see a quest log, but later in the game, when you see that character, you may remember that you need to give them a certain item, or you'll see a monument that sounds like the place they described. It rewards you for remembering things and figuring out some of these riddles. So a lot of this game is exploring, but you'll also spend a lot of time fighting. These games are known for their combat, brutal and difficult. If you get destroyed immediately, you may want to head in a different direction while you level up. Or you can face the uphill battle and try to fight this monster anyways. In combat, you'll need to rely on techniques such as rolling to escape the enemies, or master the art of parrying to block the opponent's attack and then attack them in return. It may take a few attempts at these monsters to figure out their rhythm, what works against them, and what doesn't. So the question of will you like this game is reliant on what you want from this experience. Look deep inside. If you're likely to rage quit and throw the controller when you've been defeated 10 times in a row, maybe this isn't your speed. But if you relish in the difficulty and this sounds like a satisfying experience to finally overcome these bosses, maybe this is just right for you. If you need a detailed quest log to show you where to go, this may not be your speed either. So if all this sounds like your idea of a good time, you're not alone. Elden Ring launched to amazing acclaim scoring perfect or near-perfect scores from most media outlets. So even people not traditionally into these games are now considering jumping into this world. Is that you? Let me know in the comments what drew you to this game, and if you're going to give it a try. Or if you've been a fan of these games, what do you think you're most excited for about Elden Ring? Hopefully this has helped some of you get a grasp on what this game is and why everyone is talking about it. 
Thank you for watching.